memory verse for the month of September is found in Colossians 3.23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord. We encourage you to not just memorize this verse, but to also follow along with our weekly reading program. You can do that at dc3.tv, on social media, or the MyDC3 app. Hey, we're excited to let you know that our next Encounter Worship Night will be happening on Friday, October 1st at 7 p.m. at our Punta Gorda campus. This is gonna be an awesome opportunity for you to invite your family and friends for a night of worship and prayer. We look forward to seeing you there. If you're 60 or older, a resident of Charlotte or Lee County, and struggling with being able to provide yourself with proper food and nutrition, this is for you. DC3 will be a distribution location for Harry Chapin's Care and Share Senior Feeding Program. Contact Brandy for more details at btown at dc3.tv. Hey, if you're a parent of a middle or high schooler and want to know more about what's happening in 212, our student ministry, sign up for our newsletter. You can do that at dc3.tv slash 212 and stay in the know. As our service goes on today, I just want to encourage you to take these next few moments and let's not make it about us. Let's make it all about Jesus as we focus on him, worship him for how incredible he is in each of our lives. Thank you, Lord, for the small things like me and her on the torch wing. The summer nights, the fireflies, and the sound of my old six string. Blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings if I still have breath in his laws. And that's all I need to get down on my knees and thank God for all that he's done. For my mama, for my friends, for the love that never ends, for the songs that make us dance on the And happy 19th birthday, DC3! Yes, yes, good morning. You all look so beautiful today. Thank you for being here to serve with us. I'm sure you're wondering who we are. I am Danny Nix, and I am blessed to be on stage with the most amazing, beautiful, generous, kind woman in the world. This is my wife, Carla Nix. Hello, everybody. Welcome. We are so glad that you're here. Um, if this is your first time to DC3, we just want to thank you for coming on such a special day. 
We were new here once too, believe it or not. I was fortunate enough that my handsome husband said one Mother's Day many years ago, Honey, you pick wherever we go to church today. And we landed here at DC3, a little skeptical. The pastor took the stage with a Southern accent. And as you can tell, we're not from here. We're from Georgia. That's what that G is for. And so, um, you know, this became our family. It is still our family. We do life with our life group. We travel. We love on the people in this building. And so, again, we hope you find that here, too, because it's all about family. And for us, you know, we have a saying here. It's about real love and real people. So in Mark chapter 12, look, I'm going to be real right quick. I should have told you to sit down like two minutes ago. So this is part of that real love. Thank you, Sandy. <laughs> but we live by Mark chapter 12. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. But it doesn't stop there. Love your neighbor as yourself is how it continues. And that's what we try to do here. We strive every day for this family to grow in Jesus Christ. So if you're looking to get connected, we want to be sure you know how to do that. Um, you certainly can find connection cards in the seat back pockets in front of you. You can also text the word connect to 208-0078 which will get you plugged in. Um, you can also check out the big blue tent out front or uh, meet in the Welcome Center to be able to get connected in that way. Additionally, you'll notice today that we don't pass an offering plate. We believe that people give from their heart and we wanna be sure you know how to do that if you feel called to do so. So there are giving boxes along the backside of the sanctuary. You can also download the DC3 app and give that way. Or again, you can text the word give to 941-208-0078 so that we may be able to bless others more abundantly. All right, this is gonna be the last sermon from the Family Matters uh, teaching lesson. Now, I need everybody to listen intently. And yes, even with my small ears, I will be listening intently. <laughs> but we, we wanna tell you, just enjoy the blessings that are here. And yes, as my wife said earlier, you don't give me a microphone on the stage with a Roll Tide man. For me not to tell you, this is not for Green Bay. This is for Georgia, so go dog. <laughs> uh, <laughs> with that, we're gonna ask you to get up Say hey to your neighbor. Talk about how this church has meant something special to you. Now, make sure you respect boundaries, so don't get weird, as we like to say here. But come out, say hello to each other, and we can't tell you how honored we are to have you serving with us today. Welcome to the family. As you guys continue to talk among yourselves, we're going to move on in some more singing. And we love this song. It's new to us a couple weeks ago, but it just says that I am a child of love. I am not a child of fear. I am not a, sh I am not a child of shame. I'm not a child of my past. As an adopted son or daughter of the living God, I am a child of love and nothing can separate us from the love of God. So we're going to sing about that. We're going to worship Jesus for all that he has done through through shedding his blood on the cross for us and adopting us into his family. So sing with us.
truth of your word in Romans 8, it says nothing can separate us from the love of God for those who have been called in Christ Jesus. So Lord, it's not just something that sounds good to get our emotions going. It is the truth that we live by as your children. So we tear down every lie that we have walked in here with. Everything that we believe that does not line up with the truth of God's word. The Bible says to transform your mind. Renew your mind and he will transform your mind. And when we get God's word in our mind, it begins to transform like nothing else. It is alive and active. And so we're going to sing that. I think we need to rest on that. Nothing can change the way you love me. Because I don't know about you, but when things get hard, when I'm walking through some tough stuff, it's hard to remember that he's got me. And nothing can separate me from him. So let's sing that together. Let's get that in our hearts and in our minds today so that we can live differently, okay? Nothing can change the way you love me. Nothing can change the way you're telling the Lord. I belong to you. Yes, I do. Nothing can save. Nothing can change the way you love me. Nothing can change the way I belong to you. Yes, I do. Nothing can separate. Sing it to your heart. Nothing can change the way you love me. Nothing can change. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Doesn't matter what we're going through. Doesn't matter what we're facing. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. And sometimes these difficult situations, we have to go through them because we need, we need something new. And we get stuck in the old. But he wants to make new wine. He wants to make new wine and we just got to be willing vessels. Are there any willing vessels in the house today? Is there anybody online who is a willing vessel? Oh, come on. I believe that God wants to make new wine. So let's let's push aside the crushing and the pressing and let's trust him. Let's worship him right now.
How is Jesus making new wine in our hearts and what we're doing and what we're going through? <laughs> I was reminded of a podcast I heard this week. <laughs> and you know, I, I've known the story of Peter jumping out of the boat. I've taught on that story. I've, I, there's so much there. And the reality that these disciples were in the middle of this storm that had them frightened for their lives. These are guys who lived on the water in many cases. Many of them were fishermen. So this wasn't just a storm. This was like, this was like a big old storm. This is a storm their parents had talked about. This is what this podcast was saying, which is awesome. But the thing that happened before the storm and before Peter walks on water, before Jesus walks to the boat, is Jesus stands on the shore with the disciples and says, hey guys, get in the boat. Get in the boat, knowing full well there was a storm waiting for them. Get in the boat. Because there was something they needed to learn in that storm. There was something that they needed to experience and learn and grow in through that storm. And so when Jesus said, I'm going to stay on the shore and I'm going to go talk to my daddy, get in the boat. Wow. You know, it takes a father's love to take that much interest in us, to teach us something, even in the hard stuff. It's easier for me to love my boys during, during the good times. But there's something that he wants to teach all of us in the hard times. 1 John 3, 1 through 3 says this. It's a, the message version. I love how it reads out. It says, what marvelous love the Father has extended to us. Just look at it. We're called children of God. That's who we really are. But that's also why the world doesn't recognize us or take us seriously. Because it has no idea who he is or what he is up to. But friends... That's exactly who we are, children of God. And that's only the beginning. <laughs> who knows how we'll end up? What we know is that when Christ is openly revealed, we'll see him. And in seeing him, become like him. All of us who look forward to his coming, stay ready. With the glistening purity of Jesus' life as a model for our own. That's a loving father that promises that as his family of children. Mm. Father, we just, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for bringing us into your family. 
Thank you for not letting us come in and just be servants as the, as the prodigal son thought was the best move. God, you said, no, you are my son. Here is your coat. Here is your inheritance. Here is everything. You are my child. God, we long for that inheritance, but until then, we'll live out looking at your son Jesus, who, God, you promise us someday we'll live in perfection like he did and how he does. But until then, God, allow us to rely on each other. Allow us to be family members. Allow us to be lovers of each other and lovers of you. And God, as Pastor Steve just, just shares this last, this, part, this last part of Family Matters, God, God, I pray that we'll not only hear it, but we'll embrace it, we'll digest it, and it'll just seep out of our pores because it's what you want, not because what we want even. God, we love you and we thank you. It's in your name we pray this, Jesus. Amen. You can have a seat. Good morning, everyone. How you guys doing? Turn us by right now and just say, you are blessed to be sitting by me. <laughs> Amen. If you're a part of the EC3 family, would you just turn to somebody right now and say, thanks for coming to my house. Tell them that right now. One unique thing about, you know, back when I grew up, and I'll, I'll go down the southern route since, Al, since uh, Danny called me. That, Alabama, that's a subliminal came out. He talked about Georgia. Um, when I grew up, I was in the lineage of my mom's family. Mama's family had eight brothers and sisters. My dad's family had eight brothers and sisters. And everybody lived pretty close to each other. So there was a massive amount of cousins. And I literally grew up in a small town, population 2,000 in, in Alabama, Hartford, Alabama, just outside of Dothan. And my mama's hometown had a population of about 500 people. And so we, it was small town USA. And here's something that I dare say if you did today, you'd probably get shot. But it was very common me, that we would go to family's house and just walk in. If the door was at that time, it was a screen door. You might have to throw me that mic that's down there, babe. I left the mic there. Yes, because this one is wanting to drop out on me. Thank you, Sir Brad. Give Brad a big hand. Are we good to go? 
Are we good? Okay, I'm going to check the broadcast, the online audience. Are we good up there? Somebody give me a thumbs up if we're good with the online. They're checking. Everybody hum Jeopardy music. <laughs> it's the nature of tech, Robert. You know what I'm talking about. We good to go? Sharon, Sharon, give our pro team an awesome. They're awesome. So, on any given day, you could drop into somebody's house, and it was really cool. And here's what we want you to know. If you're new to DC3 today, the door's open. And we're glad you're here. If somebody treated you bad, you come talk to me. And I will see if I can do something about it because somebody may have had a bad day. I was so stoked when I drove up to our house today and I saw the big sign out there with the happy birthday. I, had, I was more stoked that I had nothing to do with that. And I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. What my idea? Yes. That's, that's really cool. But here's the deal. I want to say something to the people that are not a part of the DC3 family. We hope you will become a part of the family. Today we're going to talk about some family things, but let me just say this up front. If you're visiting with us today, it is our honor that you would come to our home and hang out with us. We can be a little weird. Maybe you're not used to the type of singing and stuff we do, but I want to tell you, the reason we get into it, we dance, we raise our hands, is because we love our God. We love our Heavenly Father. Amen. That's right. I don't apologize for that. Um, I, I, in fact, you know, before I knew God, I was doing things out in the world that looked a lot worse than that. So that, that's a cool thing today. But we want to talk about today our family. And, and, and for those of you who aren't a part of our family, I'll give you a chance to find out what we're really all about. So I want you to turn to Acts chapter 2 right now. Acts 2 verses 42 through 47. Go with me right now, guys. We're going to read this together, and we want to talk to you about this conclusion of this series called Family Matters. Acts 2, 42, this is kind of where it all started for the DC3 family. This is the, the scripture that inspired us to sit, 12 of us, and talk about what would it be like if we planted this church that really goes after unchurched and unplugged people in a different kind of way. This is what we said we want it to look like. Acts 2, verses 42 through 47. If you don't have a Bible, by the way, we give them away here. They're yours. Pull it out from under the chair. It's the Holy Word of God. It will change your life, and that is awesome. Verse 42 says this, guys. Read it with me. It says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to what? To prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. And I love these next two verses for us today. Read it with me, guys. All the unbelievers, I'm sorry, all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Now, that is a crazy picture. If you've been around me for any length of time, you've probably heard me talk about that. Because here's why I want you to see. All the believers, how many believers now, what, what denomination or what church were they, local church are from? All the believers, they were together and had everything in common. Now, does this mean that every one of them liked Alabama and no other team? No. <laughs> I'm sure they had different uh, Olympians they root. I don't know what they did sports-wise. We know they had sports. But it doesn't mean they were all just alike in personality and interest. It means that the things that meant the most in life that were important and essential, were all common, and they were in this unity that was just crazy. So much so that when a person was in need for something, watch this. Maybe they're down on their luck with their home or, uh, or their chariot or their donkey. I don't know, whatever they're doing with their food. It says that people would sell their property and their possessions to give to who? Anyone who had need. What does that flow out of? A duty? No. There was no duty in the new church, new, uh, the new covenant church. There was no list of rules that says, hey, if someone's in need, we got this policy here at the new church of Jerusalem. You need to give X amount of dollars to the fund so that we can take care of people. No, they had so much love in their heart that they just gave. It says every day they continue to meet together in the temple courts. That's kind of like what we would do today in church. They broke bread in their homes. How many love to eat a good meal with somebody? 
I encourage you today, if you don't have lunch plans, take somebody to lunch with you. It'd be awesome. Have them over to your house. If you didn't clean up like me, then good luck with that. Um, <laughs> they broke bread in their homes and ate together. Now watch this. With glad and what? Sincere hearts. There was no faking church. I'm going to be honest with you today. If you're a person who's not a church person, you're probably like me. I'm a skeptical preacher's kid, and there was a lot of times I went to church and go, these people ain't real. They're mean. They're not really loving. But here we have these people that are just in love with each other with glad and sincere hearts. They were praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And here is the booyah, mic drop, kind of crazy thing. Now watch this. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being, oh, man. Does that get anybody excited by me, besides me? Okay, let's read it again because I know you guys probably had some cupcakes and you're having a sugar drop right now or some coffee. So read this with me one more time. And the Lord added to their number daily those who are being saved. Okay, it's kind of good in this section, weak over here. So I'm going to make you do it again. Just so I know you got it. Here we go. Together one more time. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Now here's what you need to know. Okay. This is not about DC3's numbers. This is about the numbers of the church for Jesus. Now, DC3 just happens to be one of those churches that is saying, hey, we want to show you Jesus. We want to grow people in Christ. And we do this together. It's an amazing opportunity. When I sit in this building today, I'm going, man, I talked about it in the first service. And, and still, I walk in here and go, there is more than 12 people this weekend. And they're coming. And I'm holding a mic, Amy. And I'm preaching. But I'm preaching not because I'm some qualified doctorate. To, and if you got a doctorate, that's all good. But I'm, I'm preaching because I love Jesus. And Jesus said to me way back about 35 years ago, I want you to give up your career, your music, your pursuits, and I want you to, I want you to go to work for me. Not in the monet monetary sense. He just says, will you give me everything, Steve? And I said, if it means people's lives will be changed like mine has been changed, like I've been saved from, I will do it because I was a guy who dealt with massive insecurity. I tried to mask it through a lot of different things, sports and music and all kind of cool stuff. But in my heart of hearts, I was like, I just want to know what it means to be really loved and appreciated on all this planet. And here's what Jesus said to Steve Glover, who was desperately trying to be loved, to be liked, to be cool, to be strong, you know, be a man's man. He said, Steve, he said, I'll love you for one reason. Because I created you and I died for you. And that's all you need to know. And you can stop trying to be accepted because you are accepted. I want you to turn to somebody right, right now. You're going to tell them two things. Tell them, you messed up. You are messed up. But you're going to tell them this. But Jesus loves you anyway. And now, now you get to say that, yeah. Now you get to say this, and so I get to love you. Some days we think I got to love you, but it's a get to, not a got to. Before we go on in the message, I want to take a little family break here, and I want to introduce some people to you. John Maxwell, when it comes to doing something worth having, this dream of DC3, we're 19 years old today, it's crazy. Here's what I know. We got the sign in our staff room over in Portable One. It says, teamwork makes the dream work. But I like what Maxwell adds to that. It says, but a vision becomes a nightmare when the leader has a big dream and a bad team. How many have ever played on a bad sports team before? Yeah? How fun was that? Not that much. <laughs> How many have ever had a dream to start a business or do something crazy cool and you get people together to do it and it just doesn't turn out like you thought? 
Man, I got, I got to tell you, I, early in my, my days, I had an amazing group of people, good friends, great guys, but I was naive, and I'm like, man, I'm going to start my own recording studio. I'm going to build it. It was a dream, and so I got some guys together. I'm like, man, we're in the band. Instead of p- paying for studio time, let's create our own studio, and we can have a business, and it'll be cool, and they're like, yeah, let's do it, and so like, we all got together, and we get the money together, and I, let's go, and I'm like, well, you know, I'm the only one really working here. And these 20 something, so I'm like, I'll put everything in my name. I'll, I'll put the lease of the building, all the equipment, I, you know, and you guys just pay me every month. And that was all good while we were making money. But when it went south, then all of a sudden the band broke up, right? No fault. I love these guys. But my dad, the whole time, before I did all that, said, Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. How many know you need to listen to your dad? All right, so it all turned out good, but the, but the thing is, at that, what started off as a dream, and it was a dream for a while, it eventually turned into a little bit of a nightmare, but God redeemed it. Here's what I need you to know today. We have a team of people that help this church, and you don't get to see them. In fact, we've never really done this on this scale, but we just enlarged the team of our church's board of elders and deacons, and we wanted you to meet them this morning. So would you give a big family welcome to your governing uh, deacons and elders? Come on up, guys, ladies. I'm going to introduce them to you this morning. Thank you, brother. Now, what you need to, oh, they're all, they're so nice. They're just like, no, after you, after you. It's like the Disney guys, the chipmunks, I think they are. So these amazing men and women are part of the, they they are the people that keep me in check and our team in check and make sure that our church is on sound biblical ground and following the Spirit and the leading of the Holy Spirit. And on this last Family Matters Sunday, I thought, man, what, a, what, what is a better time than today to introduce them to you? We're going to, a couple of them are out of town. We're going to show you their pictures. But I just real quickly want you to, to know who they are. And we're going to pray for them today and kind of confirm and commission them for their tenure for the next two years. So as I say their name, would you just make them welcome? Justin Smoke, just wave for everybody, Justin. <laughs> Let's give him a wave. All right. Mr. Kurt Bennett, that's Kurt. Mr. Josh Frank, make a welcome. Now, what's really cool about those, those younger guys is they are, now Kurt's been with us a long time. They are also attend the Northport campus, which gives us great representation of what's happening all over our church. So that's really cool. Brother Brad Jacobs, my. One of my brads, (laughs) and Brother Brad Lubnitz, he's one of my other brads. Those two guys are basically called Steve's butt kickers, just so you got to know that. They keep me in line. They're amazing guys, great mentors of mine. This is Brother Bill Shoemaker. We give him a big hand. Many of you know uh, Arnie from his ministry in Mozambique, Africa, but Arnie Eastburn's also serving with us. If you enjoy worship, you surely know our next, uh, yeah, Amy Zamat. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and, of course, you know Pastor Sandy Cook. Give him a big hand. All right. If you'll turn your attention to the screen right now, I want to show you uh, some of our members that couldn't make it this morning. And just put them up, guys. We'll go because I don't know what order they're in. That is my dad, Pastor Charles Glover. Give him a hand. Just so you know, my dad is an honorary deacon, who, uh, an elder who gives us input, but because of my, he recuses himself when they try to fire me. So it's, uh, <laughs> all right, our next elder is Eddie Byer, Pastor Eddie, you guys know that? The cool thing about Pastor Eddie, he was actually one of our elders before he came on staff, which is really cool. Uh, we'll keep moving on, and I think the next one is John Malone, is that correct? John Malone, give John a big hand. John has done a great job. And Kevin Larkin, give him a big hand. And last but not least, Pastor Rick McDonald, give him a big hand. All right. 
So I'm going to ask my wife to join me, who's been a leader with me here for so many years. And what we're going to do is for the guys and the ladies that are here with us, we're going to anoint them and pray for them. We're going to commission them. Even in the New Testament, they, they commissioned people in ministry, laid hands on them to go forward. And what I would like you to do as a family, if everybody wouldn't mind standing with us right now, and what we're going to do, if you're a part of the family, if you're not a part of the family, you do not have to do this if you don't feel uh, this is in your comfort zone. If you are in, uh, in agreement to pray for these men and women to help us lead this church, I want you just now to just kind of stretch, stretch your hand out to them, and uh, we're going to pray for them right now. All right. All right, Sarah's going to just anoint them. As she does, just begin to pray. Father, we thank you right now for this opportunity. Lord, you call us and you send us. And this is a big deal what they do because they are overseers of everything that happens here. And there's unfortunately many local church families that get off track because they let humanness and mindsets that are not of the Bible get in the way. They become sometimes unloving, mean, exclusive. Lord, sometimes they become too, uh, too liberal or graceful and don't adhere to the Word of God. And we ask, Lord, today for the beautiful centeredness that lies in both grace and truth. And so today, everybody, would we pray, Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit would fill every one of these leaders that they would lead with the mind of Christ, lead our family, oversee our disciplinary issues, oversee our staff, make sure that they are healthy, make sure they are centered on God and his word. And I pray today in this new season as we go forward, I believe that every person, those that are in pictures and those that are here with us on the platform, have been commissioned for this season of DC3. We could never have gotten this far without great uh, elders and 18 members of uh, years. And, Lord, I'm just excited about a new season of which has already begun with so many great team members doing uh, various ministry things throughout the church that a lot of people never see but are so crucial to the success of our church. I thank you for every one of them and their love for this church, for my family, for me personally. And I pray that you would bless them, bless this family. We ask this all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Everybody say, give them one more big hand. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. You may be seated. So here on our 19th birthday, those guys are so important to us, but so are you. I'd like to think I'm a smart guy, but that's probably a complimentary overstatement. But here's what I know. Ken Blanchard said this, guys. None of us is as smart as all of us. I want you to think about it. That's a great marriage axiom to live by. It's a great family, just for your family. None of us is as smart as all of us. And he... Beautiful things happen when we get together. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about the history of DC3, talk about where we're at today, give you a couple little uh, future things, vision things, and then we're going to pray and let you guys have a great day. One of the things that we saw when we started this church is we really had a heart to reach people that were not going to go to just any church. Uh, and so we, we decided to do things a different way, and, and, and you know, we, we, we're, everything we do, we look to the Word of God. We don't do anything outside the Word of God. But we said, God, if there's anything we can do to bring people to you, to show them the love of God, to teach them on a, on a level that maybe uh, they haven't heard before or in a language or in a culture they haven't heard before, we want to do that. So and when we started the church, you know, 19 years ago, uh, we started 
inviting people and just, it was purely relational. We didn't want to do any Christian advertising. We wanted to be different. And so over the years, very slowly, we build a lot of relationships in the community. My wife is from here. She's grew up and was born and raised in Port Charlotte. And so there was a really cool connection as people that love this city begin to say, we're just going to try to build those relationships here and talk to people about Jesus and do life with people. And that went really well, really kind of exploded when we moved from Deep Creek Elementary School over to uh, Charlotte High School and the Fine Arts and CPAC there we call it, the Performing Arts Center. And God really began to bless us with a lot of young families. And we just continued to press that envelope to reach unchurched people. And it was really cool. I, I, one of the coolest things for me, and I told this story many times before, when I sat in that uh, room that's just behind that door, Door. We're having an Ironman meeting. There's probably about 50 guys there who are coming for the first time. And I said, how many of you men in this room would say that five years ago, God in church was not even on your radar? And I'm like, man, this would be really cool because, you know, if, if a few guys, I'm going to tell you, almost 80% of that room raised their hand. And I went, that is not a typical church, Arnie, that I've grown up in. I'm going, these are people that wanted nothing to do with church or God, had their own careers, pursuits, and stuff going on. But something happened where they didn't find necessarily this religious rules thing. They found a God who wanted to have a relationship with them because they were intended to be part of his family. And that is beautiful. And if we, how many know if we get out of the way and let God do his thing, he does a whole lot better than we do? He does. And so we, we really have worked really hard of going, God, we're going to do the least amount of things that man would do or traditional things and let you do that. Not that traditional things are bad. Not that because they, they are all started with good intentions, and I believe the Spirit of God. But what we said is, all right, we're going to keep, and we saw people coming to Christ. It was cool, and things were going well. Then about ah, four years ago, the church, and again, numbers are not that important, but I, I need to tell you this for the sake of what we're going to talk about in just a second. You know, the church grew. We went up past 700, 800, 900. We went to, we started having over 1,000 people on the weekend. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I have arrived. Thank you, Jesus. And then God struck my ego down and went, no, you haven't arrived. You ain't that, you ain't that, you know. And so I had great people around me keeping me balanced. And I'm like, God, this is just a really cool thing. All the way up to 1,500 people. Then we're pegging toward 2,000 people on the weekend doing four services here. I'm like, man, I am going to die if we keep doing this. I'm not getting any younger. So then we prayed about starting the Northport campus. And Pastor Eddie says, I'll take it and we'll go and we'll start doing the live stream. It's just really cool stuff. We got online. But, but something started happening that really became frustrating. And that is like every week I sat in a staff meeting and the number one thing I heard was, we don't have enough volunteers. We don't have enough resources. We don't have enough people to serve. And so this is the point in the message where I tell you to take out your wallet, take out your pen. No, I'm not going to do that. But we begin to pray and seek the word and, and talk to people and say, what do you think we need to do? This is over probably two or three years. And we, 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 we found we hit a kind of a plateau, especially around 2017-ish. And then 2018, and then uh, you just were kind of growing slowly at that point. And then 2020 came. Whee! Right? Yay! We got plans. We're working. We're doing discipleship. And then, boom, COVID. But I got to tell you something. I said this last year a lot. I'm going to say it again. I thank God for the COVID pause, I call it. Because two things happen. It, it caused me to love and appreciate my family, my wife, and my five kids more. And it caused me to stop and appreciate you guys more. Because it's been a tough time for all of us. Amen? It's been stupid crazy. Is that okay to say in church? Stupid crazy. Tell somebody you're stupid crazy. Uh, <laughs> but as we prayed over the last year, here's what we came to. DC3 has done an amazing job of 
of being wide. We talked about this at the beginning of the year, being, being really wide and bring people in. But what we found is as we were growing people up, getting them in life groups, there was a stopping point where they weren't growing up enough to become leaders and, and, and mentors and facilitators and teachers and volunteers. And we went, how do we be better at that? So that's what we're going to talk about today because here's what we know. We want to grow our family. We want our door to be wide open. And we are better together. One of the things that we said we're going to do, guys, is we are going to create this. If you want to write this down, we're going to create a greater culture of challenge. I want everybody to say that with me. Greater culture of challenge. One of the things I've, I've loved watching over the last couple of weeks, or actually the last couple of months, is my son Luke, who loves to play baseball. You guys hear me talk about that. Um, he really uh, he wanted to get better, so he joined a traveling baseball team, which is a high commitment level. He doesn't play on Sundays. He plays a lot of Saturdays, but they practice a lot. And here's what I saw. For the first few weeks of intense practice and a lot of really hot weather, I was like, I don't know if Luke is going to stay in it because it was a high culture of challenge. But here's what I know. As I've watched him develop, his skills have become greater and greater and greater to the point yesterday he pitched for the first time. And how many know Sarah and I were far more nervous than probably he was, right? Because we're around all the parents, and that's pressure. My son's got to perform. I got a major league contract I want to get signed here, right? <laughs> He's 10 years old. God forgive me. That's probably not going to happen. But as I saw him be successful, right, and I saw him strike a couple guys out and, and get them out of the inning, I'm like, yeah, that's my boy. But here's what I know. That victory didn't happen without a lot of hard work. I watch my son Logan, who is an artist and amazing, and I watch him for hours work on his, his stuff and just going, man, I like music, but I could never do that, right? Just, just detail. He's very detail-oriented. He called me in the other day and said, Dad, I want you to see this. And he had digitally painted this street city scene. I'm going, that is crazy cool. But how many know that there was a culture of challenge in his mind that he's pushing himself and challenging himself with musicians it's that way with people who have degrees and academics and knowledge it's that way with listen watch with great families how many have been married longer than 10 years anybody here you know what I'm talking about oh it's rough baby anybody know I seriously 26 years Sarah's lived with me for 26 years there is a God that's all I'm saying Ask any of my five kids the fact that she has lived with me and not, that's why I never taught her, taught her how to shoot. I'm telling you. I am telling you. My wife does not know how to shoot a gun, lest my life be in danger. Amen. There we go. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you why we were able to meet that challenge, guys. You can't have a great culture of challenge without this. You got to have a great culture of commitment. And I'm on, listen, I've failed at many things in my life. I've failed at relationships. I've failed at family stuff. I've failed in sports. I've failed in music. I've failed in career stuff. Um, I am a poster boy. No lie. This is not an embellishment for good speech. I am a poster boy for the mercy of God. You with me, Phil? I know your story, brother. You with me? And what I know is that there are many people, probably some of you sitting in here today, that you don't show it, but you desperately need it and want that acceptance and that mercy and that love. And today, I'm going to tell you, the way that that satisfaction comes with knowing my purpose on this planet, guys, is for us at DC3 to stop living in the convenience that God has blessed us with in America that we talked about, and for us to step and go, I'm going to commit to God like I've never done before. I'm going to do it. And guys, when we do that, 
crazy cool stuff happens. I'm so blessed to be a part of a great church, but here's what I know. My leader, Jesus said, it's not about the 99, it's about the one that's out there today that needs to be in the family. Amen, right? That is what it's all about. I love coming to church. I love sitting in the comfortable chairs. But it's about the life that we do out here at Charlotte High School and PGMS and in our businesses and those kind of things. That's where the church should shine the most. And unfortunately, guys, we got a little bit comfortable in the last 50 years. And God is saying, stop it. My, my sons and daughters are out there dying out there filled with anxiety and depression and stress. Marriages are blowing up. Families are blowing up. I mean, the stuff I hear every day going on with young people, kids over at uh, the middle school that are suicidal and going through crazy stuff. I'm going, kids that young should not have to be walking through this. I'm telling you, guys, darkness is real. Brokenness is rampant. And the church, the local church, has the answer for the world. But hey, wait, wait, wait. But we're so doggone caught up in fighting each other that we're no good to the world. And God is saying, stop it. Get together. Work it out. Unify. Stop being living in a world of convenience and commit to something. And if you're going to be a part of the DC3 family, we're going to up the challenge. We're going to up the commitment level. And that's not about money or anything. That's about your commitment to Jesus Christ. Because we don't have to worry about people serving or giving if they're committed to Jesus because they do it because they love God. Not because it's about a church or building or i got to give this much or whatever, right? That's the reason we don't take offerings here in the traditional sense. Because we believe that people in love with God are going to give to what he's doing. And guess what, Brad? It works. What are we going to do? Quick commercial. Everybody say connection. Right now, if you're a new person, you come to a connection class. It's cool. We plug in. Here's something we decided. Let's change all that. From now on, every Sunday, we're going to give new people a chance to plug in to the DC3 family. And we're going to call it this. Everybody say discovery. We're going to have a brand new package thing. They're called the Discovery Sessions. They're not classes. They're only about 45 minutes long. And each week, we're going to invite people to come in here, stay after church, and we're going to talk to them, serve them a little light snack, no lunch or anything, just so they can get out here and go have lunch. Right? And here's what we're going to do. We said we're not going to talk about DC3. DC3 is cool. Tell somebody this is a cool church. No. First thing we're going to do, session number one, we're going to talk about the thing that matters most, and that's Jesus. Number one is going to be discover Jesus. It's amazing to me, Sarah and I talk about this. Most people in America love Jesus and hate the church. But here's the deal. If they know who Jesus really is, you can't separate those two. Right? So first of all, we're going to tell them to discover Jesus. Then week two, come back. Say, hey, we're going to discover what is faith? What does it mean to have faith? Well, here's what we know. Everybody's got faith. What do you have faith in? Here's what faith in God looks like. Jesus leads us to faith in God. Then week number three, we're going to go, okay, you understand who Jesus is, what faith is. Week number three, let's tell you who DC3 is and how we do things. Every church doesn't do it the same. We, we, We function out of the same Bible, but God calls us to different type of ways to do that. We'll show them the DC3 way. Jesus, faith, DC3, discover those things. In week number four, here's what's going to happen. You're going to discover family. We don't invite people to be a member of DC3 church. We invite people to be a member of the DC3 family. How many have a family? Some kind of family. Dysfunctional as it may be, right? My kids just raised their hands. Okay. (laughs) Everybody is meant to be a part of a family. From there, we're going to take them. We always say around here, circles are better than rows. We want to get you plugged into some kind of life group, some kind of circle where you can do life with people. Join a circle. That's your next step in the discipleship path, commitment path, challenge path. Then from there, we've got some new stuff we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing a cycle of classes. Join, uh, t- uh, Take a class. This is going to be done uh, in your timeline. We're going to show you and, and have one that we uh, would recommend for you to do 
foundations of Christianity, how to read the Bible, part one. What does it mean to be a part of with the Holy Spirit and the spiritual gifts? We're going to go on and do all these cool classes that you can take. And once you do a class, guys, we're going to step it up even more. We're going to get into an area that we've done organically. It's going to be intentional. It's called one-to-one discipleship. This is really where it's at. Now you say, Steve, what is that? That sounds really churchy. Guys, really, all this is is taking a person and having someone that's speaking into your life to grow you spiritually. Having a mentor, having a spiritual parent. Everybody should have one. And when I look at the culture today, this is something that doesn't get done intentionally a whole lot. And man, we have got this fantastic plan of how we're going to do that. And guys, you need to stay tuned. All that's, I don't have time to tell you all about today, but it's going to be this. People that love you, Ron, because family is the people that know the worst about you and believe the best about you. That's family. Not that we say it's okay what you do wrong, but it's to say, Ron, you can be better, man. You're, you're, You're a child of love. Don't be so mean to Lee. Maybe that was for you this morning, Ryan. I don't know. You all right, Lily? But here's the deal, guys. So this weekend, before we went to Luke's baseball tournament, we had family breakfast, right? And so as we're having family breakfast, um, I just got kind of that mode. The, the kids start bickering. Anybody's kids bicker besides mine? Anybody? Any any adults bicker? I then then I start bickering with the kids. Anybody? You kind of getting that? So there's six of us around the breakfast table having this lovely Christian breakfast. <laughs> just bickering back. Uh, my kids can't. We we have I call it diarrhea of the mouth disease in the Glover family, and and my one son who doesn't talk much. I said, okay, we're having a family meeting, right? And the looks of my kids when I say something like that, it's like, holy cow. (laughs) The watches start going out. Literally, my 19-year-old son head goes, poof, on the table (laughs) like Charlie Brown. And I'm like, come on, we're not unified here. We're supposed to be Christians. What's wrong with us? Why are we? And it just seems to... (laughs) And when I think we're going to have a miracle angel, it seems to get worse. You know what I'm talking about? Then everybody starts blaming each other, right? Total Garden of Eden stuff. Just she did it, he did it, she did it. It's just like, oh, my gosh, and I'm trying to stay calm. And then I want to leave, and Sarah says, oh, no, you ain't leaving. You're staying. You, you started this trouble. You're going to stay here and end it. And it just, it's not going well. And I get to the point where I go, all right, God, I'm tr- I can't control this. I need you to step in. And so I start talking about this idea of family and how we love, you know, we live out in the ranchettes. We got, praise the Lord, we got a couple acres. It's just a, we've been very blessed to have a great place. We got this detached garage, rec room, and all the stuff we've worked on over the years. And I'm like, man, we, we have all these blessings. I go into the uh, walk to school uphill both ways kind of things, you know what I'm talking about. Except in my mode. I'm like, you kids, I'm like, you got a beautiful house. You got a, you got a rec room over there with a pool table. And you got a music area. You got computers. You got a game table. You, you got bicycles. We got a golf cart. We, we got a pool that you guys hardly ever use it. And, and like, man, you just, you're like sit on your device. And I'm like, I am preaching, preaching hell on them right now. Just, Yeah. I said, we got to be better. And then Sarah looks at me and says, well, you're going to make them commit. Are you going to commit? Right? Yeah. Who clapped? Don't come on. on. I am so thankful for my wife because she's like E.F. Hutton, just says the right thing at the right moment. But God showed me something, and I want to give it to the house today, and we'll be done. In fact, Greg, if you want to come on up, that would be awesome. As I thought it over, I said, you know what? I said, the market's really good now in real estate. Why don't we just sell this place? I said, we have this acreage and all this space. I said, you know what we got this place for? We got it to share it with your friends and our family and have people over. So 
After service today, everybody, no, I'm just kidding. We're not doing the party today. But I said this, you know what? I said, here's what I know. I said, I would rather have a $5 house and a $5 million family. Wait, wait. Than a $5 million house and a five-cent family. It was an epiphany for me. Because we're so blessed in America. Guys, we, we have literally a $5 million building here. But let it not be said of DC3 that we have a $5 million house and a five-cent family. I want to be a place that God has called us to be that when a person who's broken, who's rejected, who's bound up, walks in this house, walks in this home, that they will sense there is something different here. There are people who are committed to love, to give, to serve, to drop their ego, to drop their reputation, and to say, I'm a child of love. I don't deserve it. But God has accepted me, and I want you to know his love as well through Jesus Christ. Mother Teresa said, none of us, including me, ever do great things. But we can all do small things with great love. And together, I love this. Say it with me. We can do what? Something wonderful. You're going to hear about this story in a couple weeks. It's the last thing I'll say. The Bible says they sold the property and possessions to give to anyone in need. I saw this week, I'm going to make this story short, a few people, really two people in this church who came to me and said, there's a, a brother in our family, health is not good, former veteran, that's in a bad way, and they really need a better place to live. And they said, we want to buy and fix up a nice camper trailer, an upgrade from where they live, and we want to give them a place to live. And I'm going to tell you, we put the need out to you guys. You guys responded in an amazing way. And I can say, last week, we unveiled this brand new 35-foot camper trailer that had been refurbished that a bunch of people in here did amazing work on that looked I walked in and went, this place is beautiful. Beautiful plants, custom stairs so they can uh, not have a, such an effort going up. And watched all this happen because the family did it. And I watched this person who said, I've never, ever been given or loved the way I be, feel loved today. And just in tears. I'm talking a war combat veteran of Vietnam and just saying, I love you guys so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And the whole time I'm thinking, this is not me. This is us. This is us. And my guys, that is what will change the world when we are Jesus to our world. And today, I'm telling you, let's step up to the plate. Let's go for a new culture of challenge and commitment in this church like never before. Let's pray. Thank you, guys. Father, I just thank you for being here with us today. God, it's been such a great run, but God, you're not done. God, you're calling us to a deeper knowledge of your word, to a greater culture of commitment to you and to each other. God, you're, you, you are calling people to lead and to mentor and disciple and parent people on a level that I believe we've never seen before that's going to create this revolution of love for God and love for people like we've never seen before. And God, that is so exciting to me personally. And I pray today that we who are Christians would make a new commitment to see that happen that we would do whatever it takes to be a member of your family, to say, yes, Lord, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Take me to total devotion. And, Lord, today for those who may be visiting church and not a church person, God, and something has just kind of grabbed their heart, Lord, that's the Spirit of God who's saying, I created you for myself. 
everything that you have, your gifts, your personality, your business, uh, your charm, your wit, your person, all those things are for me so that you can love the world and share. And Lord, I pray today that they would make a commitment, a new commitment, say, God, I want to know you. I want to know you, Jesus. I want to know what it means to be a child of love, not someone that has to work for the love, but one that's just loved because of who they are. And Lord, I thank you for this wonderful church and all its people, for everyone, from our kids' workers to our pro team to our front lines team and so many other positions that make this possible. Lord, thank you for a great day, a great series. Lord, may we choose unity, choose inconvenience. May we be dedicated like never before. We ask in the name of Jesus. Everybody said Amen. I'm going to ask you guys to stand together right now. If you want to know more about us, don't forget you stop by the Big Blue Tent. Take advantage of our photo opportunities. And uh, outside, we got some snacks. I think Kona Ice is here as well. So some fun stuff. Hang around. Happy birthday, DC3. The band's going to take us out. Love you guys. Thanks for being here.
That's who you are, and now you are on mission. You're dismissed.